And so, precious Father, we come tonight to the throne of mercy. We ascend the mountain of wisdom. And we ask that you grant us access into the holy oracles of your spirit. Let the testaments of your spirits be open. Let the veils of the divide be open. Let access be granted us that we may see you as you are and contemplate the immortal wisdom that governs the constellations. Let feebleness be swallowed up. Let the waves of the spirit be made bare. Let the cry and the burdens in the heart of the Father be picked tonight and we synchronize from the atrium in alignment in order to bring to pass your counsel, your government, your wisdom, your will, and your purposes upon the face of the earth. You prepare your hearts before the Lord. I'm not here to tell you stories. What we are doing, we are trying to align with the sounds and the vibrations of heaven. Because there's a courtesy. When you observe the courtesy of the presence, the oracles are open to you. And if you don't align, even when God screams, you can't hear him. Because he talks at an energy level. So we hear the voice of God. Others, we hear the sound of thunder. Because there's a courtesy for the oracles to be made bare. We are in the middle of a warfare. We are in the middle of crisis. We need men that can enter into heaven and download the dimensions of God. The days of religion is over. The days of church, church life, church business and church cliche is over. The threats are encroaching our borders. And we don't have men that have the stature in the spirit to say restore. It's a season of warfare and many must cry between the altar and the pouch that God should show mercy. The business of life at this time is a business of the altar a man without an altar cannot survive the voice of god must become our compass of navigation pathetically more than 90 percent of the people in church don't know the voice of god because we don't do business in deep waters I've gone for meetings before. I was slaughtered for ministration, but I couldn't find the voice of God. I told them, sorry, I can't pray tonight. Get somebody else. This is not a display of one who has read the Bible. We need God desperately. Desperately. Before you step out of your room every morning, you must apprehend the voice of God. It has become so bad now that we can't even go out freely. We can't live by assumption. And tonight we trust that God will help us. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. God bless you. The voice of God over our territory. If there's anything we need desperately now is a verdict from the monarch of Zion. If we cannot secure a verdict from God with the way we are going, a lot of things we know now very soon will become history. And it will be funny that our children may bow to strange gods unless we secure an intervention from heaven. Many of us are not even aware of what's happening in our territory. 
So when you speak about territory, many are not concerned. Pastor, many are not concerned. They don't even know what you mean. They don't have a body for it. The only body we have is what to eat and drink. About a good job, about breakthrough, about what we should wear. If the fathers that held the scepter live that way, we will not have a gospel today. Our land is overrun by iniquity, by threats of violence, threats of epidemics. And the cure is the voice of God. But where are the men that can secure the voice of God? Because the voice of God comes through men. God doesn't thunder from heaven all the time. Most times, when God speaks, His voices are carried through human vessels. He said, there's a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord. That voice is a man called John the Baptist. That means John the Baptist is the voice of God crying from the wilderness make a straight path for the Lord the king is about to walk through your borders the people were living in religion and in lasciviousness the king is coming salvation is about to hit the earth but nobody could catch the voice the prophecy was in the spirit realm for 700 years when Isaiah prophesied They were reciters of the Torah. They were readers of the laws of Moses. They were religious men, political leaders. The office of the high priest had even been divided into two. Because politics had entered the church. But what was happening in the height of the heaven was that the Christ that was tied was about to walk the earth. But the only way that door would be open was for that voice to cry from the wilderness no man could catch the voice until somebody separated himself and he dwelt in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth and suddenly a spirit came upon him called the spirit of elijah the son of a priest went into the wilderness but the man who came out was elijah because there was a need to challenge the status quo and only the spirit of Elijah in the economy of God has the stature to challenge the status quo. So that voice was locked up in heaven and a man had to give up his life. Do you know what it means to leave your father when you are the only son? A child that they prayed for until in their old age God gave one and this child suddenly one day catches a body because he senses that God wants to visit. So he packs his luggages and then he journeyed into the wilderness. A point came, he did not even have as much as clothing to wear. The Bible said he was dressed in camel skin. All he had to live on was white honey and locusts. But what he was doing, he was digging into the spirit realm. Because if the Messiah doesn't come now, we will lose our calendar. It took many years before this calendar was set in motion. Like the sons of Isaac that understood the times and the seasons. The guy knew that if this clock turns, it may take another hundred years. How many of you are aware of the visitation God wants to bring to your city? How many of you are aware? How many years it took before this window was open? But all we do is to run from office, from pillar to pole. We are religious men. No man can pay the price of securing the voice of God. The crisis of man is not an epidemic. The crisis of man is not Boko Haram threat. The crisis of the body is the lack of the voice of God. He said, the voice of God is upon many waters. The voice of God is full of majesty. 
the voice of God divided the cedars, even the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of God divided the flames of fire. The voice of God causes the hind to carve. The voice of God discovered the forest. When it comes, the Bible said, he is full of majesty. That means it comes with the dimensions of heaven. If you can catch the voice of God, then you can institute heaven on earth. This is why the community of the divine is sat together in koinonia. The earth was in decadence. The Bible said there was chaos on the face of the earth. Nothing was in position anymore. The foundations of the earth had lost this cause. The only cure was for the voice of God to come. And when he came, he said, let there be light. So the problem of the world was not darkness. It was the absence of the voice of God. Let there be light. Instantly, darkness dissipated. And do you know what the Bible said? The Bible said God called the light out of darkness. That means the light was there all the while. But only the voice of God that discovered the forest could travel into darkness to bring out light. Everything was in decadence until the voice of God was uttered. So the crisis of humanity is not the crisis of plagues and threats. The crisis of humanity is the absence of the voice of God. While we are doing religion, darkness is spreading over the landscape. And we can do nothing about it because there are no men that can apprehend the voice of God everything you call a crisis is a mirage the crisis of your life and the crisis of your territory is the absence of the voice of God the moment the voice of God shows up darkness can go back because he understands the technology of creation before eternity was, he was. Everything you know came from his bowels. And it's according to his wisdom that the, the, the structure of the universe is put in place. And every time there is a chaos, it means the influence of the divine has been removed from the equation. And the only way the influence of God can come back is when men can travel in the spirit to apprehend the voice of God. Religion everywhere, there was no hope. Even the texture of priesthood had fallen until the Bible said there was a voice crying in the wilderness. It was on that voice that the Messiah walked into the earth. On the strength of that voice crying in the wilderness, a body was prepared for him. On the strength of that voice crying in the wilderness, God became man. The incarnation. On the strength of that voice crying in the wilderness, a virgin could become pregnant. Many impossibilities began to happen in a sequence because a voice had arisen that could download God to the world. It's impossible for the religion at the time to be rolled away. It's impossible for God to become man. It's impossible for a virgin to give birth. But the cure was for the voice of God to return. The moment the voice of God returned, God could become man. A virgin could become pregnant. And God walked among men. And for the first time, the God that dwells in the midst of fire, the God that dwells in the midst of light that no man can approach, suddenly began to walk among men. And even the angels wondered, is this the God that has existed from the foundation of the world? Because they have never known him. Even the 20 and 4 elders don't know him. That's why the only name they call him in heaven is Holy. The word holy is not a name. It means you are separate. You are in your own class. 
So every time he shows up as a flame of fire, even the 24 elders fall on their face and they say, Holy, holy. We have never known him. You can't interact with him. The Bible said he dwells in light where no man can approach. No being can come close to his perimeter because of the energy that comes out of his being. But a voice appeared and suddenly the unapproachable God became a man. And the Bible calls it the mystery of godliness. That God was manifested in the flesh. For the first time, the whole creation could look at God. And he said he was the brightest image of his person. The express image of his person. The invisible God could be seen in. We have no crisis unless the voice of God becomes far. He said, in those days was the voice of God scarce. Eli had become old. Even the, the ark of the covenant became useless. Because the voice of God was scarce. The children of Eli began to desecrate the house of God until Ichabod became their reality. But suddenly a man showed up that could host the voice of God. And he said in those days, the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. A man that could host the voice of God showed up. And instantly, he said, from that day, the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistines. That means the Philistine was not the threat of Israel. The threat of Israel was the absence of the voice of God. He said, not one word from Samuel fell to the crowd. That means Samuel was stronger than the garrison of an army. That's why in Hebrews chapter 11, where they wrote the names of warriors, the name of Samuel is there. Because by the voice of God, Samuel can stop the whole army. Our crisis is a crisis of the lack of the voice of God. If we took a census now, when was the last time you heard the voice of God? You'll be amazed. This is why we are in crisis. Everything you do is by assumption. Our soul will be darkened. We will walk by the influence of the elements of this world. We will be controlled by the sun and the moon. The voice of God. The greatest commodity of a generation. How much of the voice of God do you have? If you don't have assurance in the voice of God, you are a religious man. I'm sorry to say this. But if you don't know the voice of God, you are a religious man. And the proof that you are a religious man is that, one, you will be controlled by your flesh. Because the only thing that tames the flesh is the voice that proceeds from the presence of the Father. If you don't know the voice of God, you will be controlled by the sun and the moon and the elements of your, of your realm. The environment where you find yourself will rule you. So if you are in Portaco, there is a way you will live your life. If you relocate to Onicha, your lifestyle will change. If you relocate to Lagos, your lifestyle will change. That means your environment determines the condition of your life. You can never be like the cedars of Lebanon. Like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. He said in Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6, He said, look not upon me because I am dark. He said, the sun has looked upon me. The answer to that scripture is in Psalm 1 to 1 verse 6. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. But the man that the sun smites become dark. This is why we grow in wickedness. We grow in the flesh. The reason is because we are under the influence of our environment. We can no longer travel into the place where the voice of God dwells. 
how can our territory have hope? In the days of the apostles, they were few. But the Bible said, These be the men that turn their worlds upside down. Today, our cities are 99% Christians, yet is a reflection of Hades. We are religious people. I am not talking to you because you are here. What I'm saying now is an echo to the body of Christ. It's a cry of the spirit. I'm not talking to Four Square Gospel Church. I'm not talking to the youths here. I'm telling you the reality of the body so that you will wake up because there's a way. The voice of God is upon many waters. The voice of God is full of majesty. But how can the voice of God be contained and expressed? God no longer thunders from heaven. God thunders through men. And this is the invitation into the holy place. Where we can carry the verdict of God as a testimony to our generation. You can be a banker. You can be a lecturer. But you carry the oracles of God as a testimony to your work. And through you, your territory is colonized. Because you have the witness of God. This is Christianity. Ability to contain and to express God. The finished works of Jesus grants you the right to contain God. But your work in the spirit is what empowers you to express God. Every one of us here is full of God in our spirit. But our soul is cast of God. Only walking in the spirit can give you the empowerment to express God. And this is where the economy of the voice comes in. You come to an office. There are ten staff. Nine of them are Christian. One is a Muslim. But you will know that Muslim with his God. And you'll be asking these other people, where are they from? Because one of them will look like a harlot. Another one will look like we are strange creatures. You can't even tell what we look like. But they beheld the disciples in Antioch and said, these ones are little Christ. What do you think they carried everywhere? They carried God visibly. The Bible said none of the people dared join themselves with them. Their life is too corrosive with divinity that if you come, you will be contacted. It's like a virus. 3,000 people heard Peter and instantly he said their hearts were pricked. Now we preach sermons, people clap because we are intelligent, we are not spiritual. Jesus said the words I speak, they are spirit, they are life. The idea of sermonizing now is biblical literacy and intelligence, not spirit and life. The reason is because we have God but we can't express Him. What is the economy of capturing and expressing the voice of God. The first one is called the mystery of communion. Elohim Madonna. Communion is a fellowship that brings two entities into oneness. It's a kind of intercourse that makes two one, and the goal is to produce an offspring. Before the foundation of the world, the Father spoke to the Logos, and the Logos spoke to the Spirit, and the Spirit spoke to the Father. It was a community of deity, but there was a communion going on. There was a vibration between the Father, the Logos, and the Spirit. That vibration is what produced man. Man is an offspring of deity. Man is an offspring of the communion of deity. So the life of man is a life of perpetual communion. 
Christianity is a life of fellowship with the Father. So John came, he said, that which was from the beginning. Which we have heard, which we have looked upon, but now our hands have hand of the word of life. He said the life was with the Father. Now we have seen him and we invite you to come into fellowship. He said truly, our fellowship is with the Father. That means if you interact with us, you interact with the Father. That was a man talking. If I come to your house, will I find God? If I speak with you, if I live with you, will I touch God? For say, be a followers of me, even as I am follower of Christ. So when the world was designed, the secret of dominion was locked up in communion. So long as Adam remained in communion, he had authority over the constellation, the stars, the moon, the waters. There was no earthquake. There was no epidemic. There was no landslide. It's not possible because the texture of his communion with divinity was what determines the stability of the foundations of the world. The foundation of the world was locked up in his communion with the Spirit of God. The moment that communion was truncated, sin came, death came, earthquake came, everything turned upside down. So the only way you can restore Eden back to your life is when you begin the journey of communion. Because it's in that communion that the Father said, let them have dominion. So dominion is a verdict of communion. As you interact with the Spirit again and again, the verdict come up. They looked at Job's life. Why was there so much stability? They didn't know. And Job showed up in Job 49 verse 3. He said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. He said, by light, I walked through darkness. That means the things that plague other people. Because of my intimacy with light, I could walk through darkness. This is why I was great. Not because God is biased. I had a communion that sustained life. As I was, he said, I put my leg in butter. He said, the rock poured out to me rivers of oil. Why? There was communion. It could not be truncated. So even when Satan came running to and fro the earth, up and down, and he told God, I have conquered the world. God said, no. You don't conquer the world because you see chaos. The only time you conquer the world is when communion is broken. Have you considered my servant Job? So at that time, the communion of Job with God was the foundation of the world. Satan would have outrun the earth. He said, have you considered my servant Job? The life of Job became the foundation of the visible universe. Say, go and try him. The texture of his fellowship with me is strong enough for the earth to rest upon it. And the devil tried. Meanwhile, most of us don't know. It's a job that breaks our communion. Some of us is ring because he wants to marry you. And then it breaks your communion. Some of us is money. Some of us is a job. We don't know the stakes. What is resting upon the texture of our communion. Sometimes when those trials come, it's a brack between God and Satan. Heaven and earth is in contention. And the answer to the verdict of heaven is a man of stability and the devil tried 
exercise until a point come God now thunders from heaven this is why only men of communion have the oracles of God we have too many pastors and prophets apostles and we have no light because communion is cast you can read the Bible and teach it there are many Islamic theologians who are Bible scholars the life the voice of God travels from the womb of communion and that's the only time our territory can have deliverance I told myself nobody will hear my message and clap if you hear it the first response is that you will cry and repent because the idea is to bring you back to communion they looked at the life of John they didn't know why the guy was indestructible according to Bible history they threw him in boiling oil he could not die they dragged him around the city he could not die so the only thing they could do was to throw him to the Isle of Patmos for him to die there in oblivion and hunger but even in Patmos he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day my secret is in the texture of my communion I was in the spirit they thought he was in Patmos no these men don't live on earth they live in heaven so the voice of God is not scarce to them a hand came and wrote on the wall the king saw it and was fidgeting and they invoked Daniel from the cave and he showed up what is this writing Mene, mene. Take care, that writing is a language of my habitation the country where I live that's the language we speak I don't need an interpreter I speak the same language communion is a carrier of the voice of God even in Patmos Joe was growing in fellowship this man not can shake them they are like the cedars of Lebanon. You know, the Bible said the righteous is like the cedars. The cedars grow up to 120 feet tall. So when they are on earth, their branches are in the heavens. So a man can be walking on earth, but his head is in heaven. In John chapter 3 verse 13, Jesus said the son of man which is in heaven. I walk in Nazareth, but my head is in heaven. So when I speak, I speak the life, the power, the culture of heaven. You can't understand me. You can't kill me. That's why when they showed up to kill him, they said, Who seek ye? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. They went back and fell. You don't kill him. This commandment have I received of my father. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up. So he laid it down. After three days, he carried it. Death cannot hold him captive. Communion. What the body of Christ have lost? Communion. We have churches, but they are monuments. No communion, no fellowship. Even when you start and you want to align with the vibrations of heaven, many are already tired. We are used to activity, but there is no alignment with the heavens. I was in Patmos. Do you know the meaning of Patmos? Patmos means the land of my death. The land of my dying. I've come to the place where flesh must be sacrificed so that I can hold on to the spirit. I'm willing to give away flesh. And while he was in Patmos, he said, I heard the voice behind me. I heard the voice. That's why I told you the voice of God is for men of the communion. I heard the voice. And as I turned, I saw seven golden lambs stand. He began to address the territory. So when he came from Patmos, he said, The church to the angel of the church in Pecamos. 
to the angel of the church in Ephesus, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, you cannot shape the territory until through communion you secure the verdict of God. Even your life will be a puppet in the hand of the devil. Unless you begin the way of communion. When was the last time you heard God? We are Christians by title, not by experience. Because we can't pay the price of death to flesh. Some of us begin the practice and then you pray for five minutes, it's like ten hours. And then your flesh tells you to stand up. It's a lure. The Bible calls it the seduction of the serpent. He gave them the tree of life to come into communion. But the serpent came and told them, no, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Hebrew word is nakash. Nakash means whispers of divination. You means of enchantment. So you stay there and the nakash comes and it seduces you. You go and open your pot. What are you looking for in the pot? You carry your phone, you enter Facebook. What are you looking for? You can't kill flesh and come into communion. We are a generation of distracted people because flesh rules us. I told them in the morning, when we live by the flesh, we go back to the state of the fallen man and the fallen man is dust and the serpent feeds on dust. This is why we are weak and our territories are being overrun. We don't have communion. Even when we open the Bible, we can't see heaven. We are dwarfs. All we see are earthly things. The same thing the unbeliever sees from the Bible. That's all we see. Principles of world creation. That's all we see. Because we live by bread and by bread alone. Most times when I pray, I say, Lord, have mercy. Help my heart. There was a David that we say, my heart pants after you. I test for you like in a dry and testy land where no water is. That's the deer. He can smell water from two kilometers away because of the kind of test that he has for communion with water. David said, that's how my heart is. I'm thirsty for you. I am addicted to you. I'm obsessed. So in the public, a king can afford to rent his garment. He is not aware that people are looking. He's conscious of God. He's conscious. And God rebukes him. He falls on his face and says, please, take not thy spirit away from me. You can take the kingdom. I can afford not to be a king anymore. But please, please, please. Take not that spirit away. Those are the men that command the attention of the king. Men can fall under the power. You can raise the dead. That is not power in heaven. I tell you, among the angels, raising the dead is not power. Because they live where death does not exist. In the realm of kings, what we call power is the ability to sustain spiritual hunger. Testing and seeking after the Lord all your life. That is power in the realm of kings. Among the mortals, what they call power it's not your ability to heal the sick. How much hunger can you sustain? How much of God do you desire? That's why in heaven, you are closer to God depending on the texture of fellowship that you have. The 20 and 4 elders are not mindful of their crown. They can throw it away anytime. They are not mindful of their throne. They fall down flat every second. All they are interested in is how to know this being, this being that dwells in fire. How do we know him? He said, day and night, the four beasts, they keep singing. 
holy, holy, day and night without ending, and they are satisfied. Hunger for God. A man can sing one song for three weeks. The song is there. Is there. He sings it from morning to evening. He sings it. That's a man of power. He has stability in the spirit. So when God visits a territory, he doesn't go to the healer. He goes to the man of hunger. I was among the captives by the river Kabar. We were all prisoners, but I was looking for God. Others were looking for deliverance. I was looking for God. And suddenly he said, the heavens opened and I saw visions of God. All of them were captives, but there was a captive that was looking for God. Because he's a priest. And the job of the priest is to bring worship to God. In Exodus 28 verse 1, he said, Raise unto me Aaron and his son, that they will minister to me. So priesthood does not begin with legislation and litigation. It begins with ministering to that deity, that oracle, God the Holy One. So even while he was in captivity, is God that was his priority. And when he saw him, instantly he became a prophet. What's the quality of your communion? We are talkers, we are preachers, but we have no witness because we can't bring God on the scene. We have 2,000 messages, but it has not transformed 10 persons. 2,000 messages. It's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, but it has not transformed 10 persons. Every week there's a new message, but there's no man transformed. There's no communion. There's no communion. We are talkers. And the younger generation, we have followed the error. A man cannot stay with God for three hours in a day. Out of 24 hours. 168 hours in a week. He can't reckon to have stayed with God for 17 hours in a week. And then he goes out. He is talking the word of God. You have no message. Because you don't know the voice of God. the church he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the spirit the communion of the spirit we have the holy ghost but we have no communion meanwhile the elders of old did not have the holy ghost but they knew what communion was until Moses through communion we provoke god to come down from heaven he said, I speak with Moses by servant face to face. A man moving with a pillar of cloud and with a pillar of fire. God said, go, my angel will go with you. He said, I will not move until your presence, until your presence comes. Meanwhile, you, you open one blind eye. It becomes your sermon for 10 years. I will not move until your presence comes with us. If I have found favor with you, show me thy glory. Communion was his business. Say, no man see me and leave. Show me thy glory. He said, I will hide you by the cliff of the mountain. And when I pass, you will see my back. That was a business. A mortal man without the Holy Ghost was doing with God. No wonder. The guy goes to the mountain and is there for 40 days. That's where he lives. Every time the glory descends upon the tabernacle of the congregation, Moses entered. Moses knew God until he knew even the God that hides himself. God has many dimensions. One of the dimensions of God is called Jehovah Zaphaniah. That is the God that hides himself. Every time God comes in the dark cloud, it means he's hidden. Only men of communion can find the Zaphaniah. Because their pursuit is not what God can give. Their pursuit is God. That was where Abraham entered. God had blessed him with Kratos. 
but he said i want you and he said i am your shield and your extinct reward now you have inherited me a man went to heaven and he was taken to a room and he saw few persons there and they were studying and abraham turned and looked at him and abraham came to him and he asked abraham what why are there so few people here he said we study the heart of the father so we are called the friends of god even in heaven only few make it there Say he has touched all the glory. Paul lived under water for more than 24 hours. Paul was carried to heaven, carried to Hades. All the wisdoms of God were revealed to him. But he said, I count all of these things as dog. What is my pursuit that I may know him? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Communion. You don't know why they wielded so much power. The only thing they pursue is God. But the church doesn't even understand this language. So when you talk these things, they can't even be moved because we are rusty. We are obsessed with the pursuit of this life. And John came, he said, Love not the world. They that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. He said, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Love it not. He said, the earth pass away and the lust thereof. He said, but they that love the Father shall abide forever. Because communion began before the foundation of the world. And even at the last, communion will remain. In Revelation 22 verse 17, he said, the spirit and the bride says, come. Perfect harmony has been attained. What was in the heart of the father when that fellowship of the God had decided to create man and God will come to visit him in the cool of the day. That is what was achieved at the end. So the only men that will shine like the brightness of the heavens, that will be in the new Jerusalem, that doesn't need sun, but having the star of God, Jesus, as the sun, are the men of communion. He said, the spirit and the bride says, come. And he said, whoever hears it should say, come. It's about communion. It's about koinonia. It's about fellowship. And he said, they shall be allowed to freely drink of the waters of life. Our land have no hope if we have no fellowship with the Father. Our life is already useless if we have no fellowship from the Father. The things you call God into, you don't need God to have them. The residual grace in nature is enough. Dan Gute doesn't know the Holy Ghost. But you may never be as rich as him. But that's what our pursuit is about. Money, influence. There's nothing wrong with it. But God has something more important to offer. is himself. How much of him have you apprehended? That's when the voice that can change your family, the voice that can change your life, that's where you catch it. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. I heard the voice as of a trumpet. And as I turned, I came into fellowship. I want us to pray. You don't need to stand up. There you are seated. Bury your head and press into Zion. Elijah was there. Seven times he was there because what he wanted to see is what will determine when the prayer will end. Now we pray with watches. But the men of old, they pray with encounters. Their prayers end when they hit the realm. They pray into God. We pray into time. That's why we are weak. I assure you, 
We are almost ending the week. Some people have not spoken with God for up to 30 minutes. That's the kind of church we have. Press into God. Show me yourself. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. You are the one I seek. You are the object of my affection. You are the object of my obsession. I want to know you. I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of the cliche. I want to know you. When I read the Bible, I marvel. Who taught the Old Testament prophets how to live as spirits? The Bible says Jonah ran away from the presence of God. That means Jonah naturally lives in the presence. A man lives in the presence so much that when he wants to have problem with God, he runs away from the presence. Meanwhile, we have the Holy Ghost, but we don't know the presence. He said, Jonah ran away. <laughs> when the ship was in populace, Jonah came and said, I am your problem. Cast me into the sea. The man knows he can't die. We don't die. We don't die. If I enter the sea, I will become aquatic. That's how we deliver territories. When Jonah was carried by the whale and the whale dropped him on the shore, his journey was three days to Nineveh. Jonah traveled only for one day. And when Jonah cried, the king tore his clothes and began to repent. The vibrations from Jonah convicted the whole city. There is no evangelist like Jonah to date. Because he's a man of the presence. Jonah preached only one gospel. He arrested the whole city. Communion. Moses, the Bible said, he led his father in law sheep until he came to Hobe, the mountain of God. And he entered the communion. And he came with a staff. And he entered the civilization of Egypt. John was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. And when John came out, the Bible said the whole of Jerusalem and Judea went to him. This man conquered nations. They conquered civilization because of the quality of their fellowship. Daniel was in Babylon. And he was shifting principalities and powers. Why? Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Three times in the day, three times, he lay down facing Jerusalem. And there he prayed. How was Jesus able to do it? Mark 1.35, early in the morning, in the cool of the day, he went to the solitary place. There he prayed. Many times he saw Jesus enter into the mountain. There he prayed. One day the apostles followed him. And when they saw him, they said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His Roman Christian communion in the spirit. If I don't have the stamina and the power to stand in the spirit, I don't have a message. We are not, first of all, preachers. We are witnesses of the age to come. We are witnesses of the powers of the age to come. We are carriers of God, keepers of his oracles, testifiers of his witness. Tonight, I want to invite you to come into fellowship. That is what Christianity is about. The world began with fellowship and it ends with fellowship. That which was from the beginning, the communion of the Father that we have come to invite you into. That's what was.
and that is what is to come. The bride and the spirit says, Come. The devil begins to kill you the day he breaks your communion with date. That's what Adam did not know. The power to rule Eden and the galaxies was locked up in his fellowship. Dominion is a verdict of fellowship. You want to reconcile with the Father and tell him from today, I will give you a tithe of the day for fellowship. Come to the front. I want to pray with you. The religion is too much. Help me. I want to walk in experiential fellowship. I'm tired of the status quo. I'm tired of religion. I don't know you. That I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. If you will call upon his name, he will hear you and he will answer. The Lord must thunder from his holy mountains upon our lives. Ah! We want to have fellowship. We begin to sleep. We begin to yawn. But we can watch movies for 10 hours. We are weak. There's no strength in our spirit. Cry. 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 Talk to him. I want you, Father. I love you, Lord. Before God, you must start. He can carry God to the public. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Some of you will start weeping now, as I'm talking to you now. Is God breaking upon your heart? You are not necessarily weak. It's just that the flesh is strong. And the way God kills the flesh is that he drowns the flesh by his spirit. He said God caused the fountains of the deep to open and he opened the windows of heaven and all flesh was drowned. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your daughters will begin to prophesy. Flesh will be drowned. Right now, there's about to be a release of the Spirit upon you. That's what drowns the flesh. Father! I tell you the truth. Twelve of us are enough for this city. If we carry God. If we carry God. The serpent will run back to the ocean. Hey, the pieces will fall from the galaxies. If we carry God. Lord, I stretch my hand over your people. Release your spirit afresh. Release your spirit. We believe you've been blessed by this sermon. For inquiries, please call plus two three three two six seven six seven six zero five five plus two three three two six seven six seven six zero five five or send an email to info at godswordforus.com info at godswordforus.com